Okay, tonight then, we're going to look at um, integration as the inverse of differentiation and integration between limits to find the area under the curve. So let's have a look at uh, this basic idea of integration to start off with then. Not sure, Mason off the top of my head. Okay, so integration then. Yeah. Integration, there's an integral. So, first thing is how do you write this integral? How do you draw it? Well, if that's your line on the paper, and that's the line above it, so there's the 3x written on a line on a piece of paper, then the integral symbol goes above and below that line so that later on we could put limits in, as we'll see. So that, it looks like a sort of an elongated s, and it means the integral. So this is the integral. The line that you have now writing your notes on, on the paper. Okay. The integral of 3x with respect to x is the way we'd say that. The integral of 3x with respect to x. So this bit is the with respect to x bit and this bit is the integral. So that's the notation to me in the integral. So this means the integral of 3x with respect to x, what we're going to do is we've got 3x and we're going to integrate. So after the, the answer, we have, we'll come up with a function which is the answer to this. What is the integral of 3x with respect to x? So how do we say this? The integral of AT with respect to T. Okay. So what does that mean? The integral of AT with respect to T. T is the variable. Because we're integrating with respect to T. So T is the, is the function part of it, the function. Which means that A, any other letter, must be a constant. So in other words, if you've got two letters inside an integral, an A and a T, we need to know which one is the variable, which is the one we're integrating with respect to. So you need to write dt. You can't have an integral symbol without knowing what it's, respect, what it's being integrated with respect to. Yeah, th that's right. The dt, like dy by dx, meant the difference of y with respect to x. No, the t is the variable. A will normally be a number. It's just that we don't know what that number is. So, for example, if we look at the top one, that's the same sort of idea as this one, but in that case, we know what the number is. It's 3. In this case, we don't. Would D be a number? No, D means the, the like, um, if we think of, in the same way that dy by dx is a notation to mean the differential of y with respect to x, it doesn't mean D times y over D times x. In the same way, the integral with respect to x is a notation. It doesn't mean d times x. It's a, it's a notation. Okay, John? 
perhaps become more clear as we go through some examples. So that's the notation for this thing. That's how we say it. What do we do to get the answer? How do we integrate How do we integrate? We refer to a table of integrals. Somebody has done all the hard work for us and come up with a table of integrals. All we need to do is refer to that table of integrals to find the answer. Called standard integrals. A bit like the table of standard differentials we had. What's the differential of ax to the n? We looked at the table and it told us we bring the power down times that by the number in front and take one off the power. That table and then there was a different what's the difference of sine, cosine and others. So we need a table of integrals like we had a table of um, differentials. So let's put together our table and then we can start using it. So like the table of standard differentials, we've got a table of standard integrals. So let's write down this table. You might want to put it on a separate piece of paper so you've got it to refer to, like we have the table of standard differentials to refer to. So here's the table. Um, we've got on the left something, some function we're going to integrate. Remember when we were talking about this idea of the function, it doesn't have to be f function, it could be any letter to represent the function. Just um, yeah, highlight a pen here. It could rep any number to re could represent the function, any letter rather, g x would still represent a function. But we're going to integrate that function. And remember, inside the bracket, it's telling us what's the variable. So x is the variable. In this case, for all these in the table, x is the variable. But in examples, it doesn't have to be. So you need to identify what is the variable. And if you need to know what the variable is, you look at that. The dx tells me x is the variable. It could have been dt, as we saw on the previous slide, which would tell me t was a variable. So we're looking at x as being the variable in all these examples. Let's look at an example of each one as we're going through. So the first one is probably the most common one that you'll use. For example, 3x squared. <coughs> yeah, you can put this as an example on the table, 3x squared. If we look at the rule, what it tells us to do, and I might well put this in words at the end of this to, to help us to remember it. It tells you, all you do is you look at the power, which in this case is 2, so it's squared, and you add 1 to it. n plus 1 means add 1 to the power. So that becomes a 3, and then you divide by the new power, 3. So I'm going to write 3x squared, whoops, 3x cubed over 3 plus c. I'm adding 1 to the 2 to make it 3. I don't add 1 to the a, just to the power. Yeah. Uh, no, it's the original n, which was 2, plus 1 is 3. Yeah. And then, of course, we could tidy this up algebraically, and you would be expected to do that. But I've left it as that so you can see it. But of course, what I do is I cancel the threes, and it would be x cubed. OK? Another example might be, for example, the sine of 2x. So what this tells me is the 2 comes out, and it's minus 1 over 2 goes in front. So this is minus 1 over 2. And then the sine changes to cosine 2x plus c. We'll talk about the plus c in a minute. 
let's just get these examples done. You just follow the rule, what the rule tells you to do. Next one, if I put the cosine of 5x, what would the integral be? Using that rule. Yep, 1 over 5. The cosine changes to sine and it stays as 5x inside plus c. Follow the rule, in other words. Next one, e to the ax. So, for example, e to the 4x. The a comes out and we write 1 over 4 e to the 4x plus c. The next one is a standard result that we use a lot. This is actually an important one, important one that we often come across. <coughs> so that's why I put that in there. For example, 4 over x, we think of that as 4 times 1 over x. So we just think of that as 4 times, what's the integral of 1 over x? Log x. So it would be 4 log x plus c. It wouldn't be. It always turns out to be the natural law. And then finally, I just like we did in the differentiation, a common one which really is just like the top one. If there is no variable there, no x, and I'm integrating with respect to x, the x, the variable, just reappears. So what's the integral of 5? Five? 5x five plus c. Always plus c and it become apparent why. So those are some examples in our table of integrals. It's worth writing in words what the top integral is. So let's take that top integral. So put some sort of asterisk by it. We've used the asterisk mark, so put that little symbol there. And then we're going to write this in words. And what you do is, to integrate, add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. Let's take that first example and look at it again. What's the integral of 3x squared? It's 3x cubed over 3 plus c. And look at that in a bit more detail. Okay? So let's look at that on another slide. The integral of 3x squared with respect to x equals... 3x cubed over 3 plus c. That's what we've just done. Yeah, well, no, uh, yes, it's new to you because that's a table of standard integrals, so keep that separate so you can refer to it. Know what this is in words. We've written it down. What's the integral of 3x squared with respect to x? It's 3x cubed over 3 plus c. I've added 1 to the power and divided by the new power. And then I'm going to tidy this up and cancel the 3s, top and bottom. So that will just be x cubed plus c.
I said at the beginning that uh, we're looking at, at, first of all, at integration as the inverse of differentiation. So in other words, what we've done here is, by integrating 3x squared, we've come up with what we would have had before we differentiated it to get 3x squared. So what is the differential of x cubed plus c? What is the differential of x cubed plus c? Think back to what we've been doing over the last couple of weeks. If y equals x cubed plus c, dy by dx, the differential of y with respect to x is 3x squared. What's the differential of a constant? Zero. A differential. And when you differentiate, the constant disappears. So the answer is 3x squared. Now, if you think back to this, if I go back to here, what's the integral of 3x squared? It's x cubed plus c. Because I've no idea whether or not there was a constant here to start off with and I differentiated. If there had been a constant here, let's say c was 4, when I differentiated it, I'd have got 3x squared. So when I integrate, I'm going to get x cubed, which gives me the first bit, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, it gives me the x cubed bit. But I have to put this c on because I, don't, I can never be sure that when I differentiated, I got rid of the constant. So when I integrate, I have to put the constant back. So if you look at the table of integrals, which is on that previous slide over here, all of those values on the table of integrals have plus c at the end, because when you integrate, you have to put back a constant that might have disappeared when you differentiated it. So when we integrate, we must put back a constant C called the constant of integration that may have disappeared when we differentiated. In a practical situation, where we have to integrate we often need to take the problem a step further or to take the problem further and find this constant. This is done using initial conditions. boundary conditions are sometimes called. <coughs> so
So the chapter on standard integration in the textbook, let's just have a look at it. First thing to notice is one of the first things you're introduced to is that first rule we put on our table of standard integrals. The integral of ax to the n with respect to x, note the language I'm using, okay, and that's a symbolism, is ax to the n plus 1, so add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. And then add this constant of integration c. And it gives some examples, look. The integral of 3x to the 4, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So it becomes, yeah, would be the final answer. No, not at this stage. You would need some extra information to, to be able to find out what C is. So, yeah, for now, you just leave that as plus C. Okay? Look at the next example. That's an interesting one. 2 over x squared. So, like differentiation, if I want to integrate something like this, I need to rewrite 2 divided by x squared and recognize that the inverse of x squared is x to the minus 2. So that would be rewritten as the integral of 2 x to the minus 2. And then we just use exactly the same rule. Add 1 to the power, minus 2 plus 1 is just 1. So we add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, and that leaves us 2 x to the minus 1 divided by minus 1. Let's have a look at that example, shall we then? So let's go to our notes. And um, so the integral, let's look at this as an example. The integral of 3 over x squared with respect to x. Let's look at this in detail. Okay, so first step. I am recording. Yeah, first step, rewrite 1 over x squared. We think of this, let me split it, you wouldn't necessarily write this line, as 3 times 1 over x squared with respect to x. And it's also possible, and we do this more and more as we go through, we're only integrating, we're only interested in this part of it because that's what we're integrating with respect to, the x there. So actually, any number that happens to be inside the integral can come out. So I can rewrite this as the integral of 3, sorry, 3 times the integral of 1 over x squared dx. So this is the way you might try and simplify this problem to make it look like a standard integral. The process here is get this to look like a standard integral, SI, short for standard integral. In other words, one of the values on your table. So I get rid of the 3 outside the integral. It now looks like 3 times the integral of 1 over x squared with respect to x. Now I use the relevant law of indices. The inverse is the negative power as 3 times the integral of x to the minus 2 with respect to x. Of course, in reality, if you're doing this problem, you would jump straight from that step to that step. I'm just putting the intermediate steps in so that you can see what's going on, okay? Uh, using the fact, the law of indices, it tells you that 1 over x to the n, John, is x to the minus n, a minus power. And that's the law of indices. And if you look, if we think back to the beginning of today's session, which was here, that was one of the two laws of indices I said it's going to become important. So, so that we're using it here, okay? You need to know those. So where were we? Uh, here we go. So we get to here. Now, this looks like a standard integral. It looks like the first one. Ax to the n 
or x to the n in this case, goes to a x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. That's the one it looks like from our table of standard integrals. So, Three. Now we're doing the integral, so the integral symbol disappears. We're going to add 1 to the power, x to the minus 2 plus 1. I'll use a colour so you can see it over uh, the new power, minus 2 plus 1. plus C. Minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. Minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. So, what we're talking here is the integration actually is, is done. We use the rule. The rest of it is algebra, tidying up. And I'm trying to split this up into steps. Again, you wouldn't do all this uh, to see what's going on here. This can be split thought of as 3 over minus 1 times x to the minus 1 plus c. This is the thought process, not necessarily going to write this step down. But um, that's what I'm thinking in my mind, because 3 over minus 1 is, is effectively just minus 3. And x to the minus 1, using remembering this law of indices here, how can I rewrite x to the minus 1? 1 over x to the 1, or 1 over x. So actually, this becomes minus 3 times 1 over x plus c. And I could just as easily write that as minus 3 over x plus c. Either of those solutions would be the way to leave it. And so that would be the final way to leave it. Try that. OK, how are we going to go about doing this then? Right, so we can think of this as? Yeah. Yeah, and in addition, I can bring the 4 outside the integral. So I might well write that. If you leave the 4 inside, it doesn't matter, but you can also bring it out. You get the same answer either way. Okay? Right, and then I'd rewrite that as 4x to the minus 3. Sorry, 4 times the integral of x to the minus 3 with respect to x. Yeah, what about this little table in the middle here? What's next? Right, which is? Yep, so let's leave that little step out and then divide it by, right, plus c. Don't forget the plus c. Good, okay, so you don't need to put in that minus 3 plus 1 step. I was just showing it. Yeah, fine to do that. What's next, Andrew? Right, it's all gone at the moment, has it? Yes, it's the first rule that we're using, Andrew. No, no, I've done the integral now. So now it's just a case of tidying up. So what can I do to tidy this up? Yes, 4 divided by minus 2 is just minus 2, x to the minus 2 plus c. Yeah, I could write that, perfectly acceptable. What could I do to finish it off, Mason? How can I rewrite x to the minus 2? Minus 2 times 1 over x. Not 1 over x, 1 over x squared, right, plus c. Yes, I could write it like that. Or 
I could rewrite minus 2 times 1 over x squared as minus 2 over x squared. Either way, I think when we first started our algebra, I talked about this idea that I can rewrite something like a over b as a times 1 over b. And that causes confusion with lots of people. This is an example where that's being used. Look, I can ease just as easily write it as minus 2 times 1 over x squared or minus 2 over x squared. They are equivalent. Yeah. Right, here's another example. Integrate. <laughs> the square root of x cubed with respect to x. Okay, Let's go through this example and then I'll give you one to try that's like it. Like always in this, it's not the calculus that's difficult, it's the algebra that makes it awkward. Okay, It's the algebra. Well, the rule of in law of indices we're using is that the nth root of x to the n can be written as x to the n over m. So how am I going to rewrite this, Daniel? x to the... Yes, remember, it, there's the, no, it's a 2, yeah, with respect to x. So the first step is to rewrite this as x to 3 over 2. And then it looks like the standard integral, the first one. It looks like this again. The integral of ax to the n is ax to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. In other words, we're using this first one in the table again, where n now is a fraction. It's 3 halves. Yes, but I'm going to leave it as 5 halves. x to the 5 halves over 5 halves plus c. Write that. Now, algebraically, this next step is key, so focus in on this bit. Um, this is like saying... Again, I wouldn't necessarily write this step, but this is what I'm thinking to myself. This is like x to the 5 over 2 divided by 5 halves plus c. And from our knowledge of fractions, when I divide by a fraction, I invert and multiply. So this becomes x to the 5 over 2 times 2 over 5 plus c. So if I've got a fraction underneath an integral, I invert the fraction and turn it into a multiply. That's what's going on here. So Mason, that's why I didn't call it 2.5, because that allows me to do this yeah. step here. Okay? That's not to say you're not right, you could do that. So now this becomes 2 fifths of x to the 5 over 2 plus C, and that would be my final answer. Looking at this, divi this um, division again, I'm using the idea two-thirds divided by a half. What's a half of two-thirds, in other words? It's two-thirds times two over one which is what we actually do. So when we divide by a fraction, you invert the bottom fraction and multiply, which is something you would have done ages ago when you're talking about fractions. And so that's the rule we're using here, which equals, in fact, 4 over 3. How many halves are there in 2 thirds? 4 over 3. We could talk about why that happens, but I don't want to at this stage. Okay? 
Yeah, that's effectively what I have done. That's exactly what you do, dear John. You turn the fact that it's underneath, you flip it upside down and put it as multiplies. So the two goes on top and the five goes underneath. So that effectively that two comes up. And that always happens with integrals like this. So whenever you've got roots, you're likely to end up with um, a fraction in the power, which means that when you do the integration, you're likely to end up with a fraction underneath. So then you just invert it. You just learn to do that. OK. Try this. Yeah, let me just write this down, then I will. 3 times the integral of the um, cube root of x squared with respect to x. Um, so let's have a look at this example, then. Equals 3 times the integral of x to the 2 thirds with respect to x, using that first law of indices. The cube root, so the 3 goes underneath in the fraction. Now I am going to apply the law of indices, uh, the, uh, the table of integrals, add 1 to the power divided by the new power, equals 3, x to the 2 thirds plus 1. Is the same as two thirds plus three thirds, which is five thirds. Okay, add one to the power. Two thirds plus one is five thirds. Divide by the new power plus c. So it's adding fractions. The same with differentiation when you subtract one. Think of it as a three thirds or four quarters or five fifths, whatever we're talking about. The same when you're adding it. Two thirds plus three thirds is five thirds. Divide by five thirds, invert and multiply. So this becomes three times x to the five thirds times three over five plus c. So I've inverted the five thirds and called it three over five. Yeah, I'll do it. That's my next step. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to try and avoid the multiplication symbol, so I've just used a dot because it looks too much like the x. No, I don't invert the power. I only invert the fraction underneath because dividing by a fraction, you invert and multiply. Nothing to do with the power. And then, as Daniel suggested, and I look at the top, I've got a 3 and a 3 on the top, so I can multiply them together to get 9 fifths, putting the number first, x to the 5 over 3 plus c. So I would certainly, like we were talking about with differentiation stuff, tidy up by putting numbers first and then could leave it like that or I could put it back in square root form because divide by 3 means the cube root of x to the 5. So I could rewrite it as 9 fifths of the cube root of x to the 5 plus c. Either solution would be right. It depends on what's happening next, Mason. So that's always the answer to that. I'd be quite happy with either of those solutions. But I still, again, make the general point. Even if you don't write it like that, you need to be able to convert from one to the other. So why not practice it? No, it isn't. It's but not step, is it? it's not the next step. No, you're dead right, Major. It's not the next step. It's not obligatory to write it like that. I just want you to understand that you can, so okay. that you, you're familiar with it. Okay. Okay. I want to look at one more, and then we'll take a break. It could be around about halfway by then, seven o'clock. integral of uh, 
Of course, the integral might not be with respect to x. The variable might not be x. It might be theta, in this case, theta. Not any more difficult. We're just using a different symbol. So, in situations like this where I've got theta, the variable appearing more than once, I've got to start being careful. I can't just integrate this as it stands. Um, luckily though, I can split this up into two fractions and integrate each part separately, just like we differentiate each part separately. We can integrate each part separately. So where possible, split this into two separate fractions. In other words, I can call this theta over the square root of theta plus 2 over the square root of theta with respect to theta. And to do that integral, I just integrate each bit separately. Next. I remember that the square root of theta can be written as theta to the half plus 2 over theta to the half with respect to theta. So as before, I'll rewrite the root in power form using the law of indices. And this becomes the integral of theta to the 1 minus a half plus 2 times 1 over theta to the half with respect to theta. I wouldn't necessarily write this step, but that's what I want to think of. So this is like an intermediate step. like a thinking step. Why have I written 1 minus a half there? Uh, yes. What do you do when you divide when you've got the same base? You No, when you divide numbers with the same base, what do you do with the powers? Subtract them. When you multiply, you add the powers. When you divide, you subtract the powers. The law of indices. And so what I've got, I'm remembering here, is that theta on its own means theta to the 1. So I've actually got theta to the 1 minus a half. So here you just written plus a half. Yes, yeah, which is why I put this as a, as a thinking step, because I don't actually necessarily write that down. And I also think in my mind that 2 over theta to the half is the same as 2 times 1 over theta to the half, and that's an inverse, isn't it? So the actual step I write down is the next step, which is the integral of theta to the half plus 2 theta to the minus a half with respect to theta. Of course, I wouldn't bother to write this step down. I would probably jump straight from there. That's just a thinking step in the middle here. And so now I'm going to do the integral. So this equals theta. Add 1 to the power. A half plus 1 is 3 halves over 3 halves plus 2 times minus a half plus, a, plus 1 is a half over the new power, a half plus c. I only add the c once, I don't have to add it twice for each integral because it's just a constant at the end. So I get that if I did the integral. Uh, this is the integration bit. This is the only bit where we do some integration. We refer to our table of standard integrals and do that. Add one to the power divided by the new power. All the rest of it becoming before, uh, coming before and afterwards is algebra. So the calculus bit really is the easy part of the process. This first term, divide by 3 halves, invert and multiply. So this becomes 2 thirds, putting the 2 thirds first, 
theta to the 3 over 2, plus that becomes 2 over 1. 2 over 1 times 2 is 4 theta to the half plus c. I've missed out a little thinking step there, but I hope you can see it. Times by 2, 2 twos are 4. And so that might well be how I'd leave it, Mason. You know, it's perfectly okay. But if you wanted to, you could rewrite it in root form. So that would be 2 thirds times the square root of theta cubed plus 4 times the square root of theta plus c. Not that you're going to have time to do this in the exam, but of course you can always check you've done it right by differentiate and check you get back to the start effectively or to the original function that we started off with i.e. Uh, there before we, after we split it up if I were to now differentiate this, in other words, write it like that and use the rules of differentiation, I should get back to where I started from. And then I'd know I'd done it right. So, right. Try questions exercise. What is in the new book, please? These uh, exercises on standard integrals. Exercise 182, page, sorry, 460, and use the video links for solutions. I don't